Hello and welcome to the Palliation Lecture in the Psychosis Series. This is Dr. Nicholas Hatcher and in this presentation we will apply psychopharmacologic and psychotherapeutic principles in the management of psychosis. Here is a reminder of where we are in the series. Now that we've considered the various causes of psychosis, we are now turning our attention to treatment modalities. This lecture will emphasize a specialized topic regarding the psychopharmacologic principles of psychosis treatment, clozapine. Treatment-resistant schizophrenia affects 20 to 30 percent of all patients diagnosed with schizophrenia. Clozapine is a potential option for that patient population. Clozapine was initially shown to be more effective than chlorpromazine, the prototypical first-generation antipsychotic. It then showed advantage over several first-generation antipsychotics in various trials. The Cutlass II study found that patients failing to respond to two or more antipsychotics responded well to clozapine. The Katy trial revealed effectiveness over quetiapine and risperidone. In other studies, Clozapine has been shown to reduce mortality over other antipsychotic agents, including first-generation antipsychotics, risperidone, and quetiapine. Clozapine is a special second-generation antipsychotic with several considerations, the most important of which is that you must check a baseline complete blood count, or CBC, in order to ensure that white blood cells are greater than 3.5 and the absolute neutrophil count is greater than 2.0 within seven days of starting clozapine. This must be monitored on a frequent basis. A baseline EKG is also required to ensure that the QTC is less than 500 milliseconds. Otherwise, it is best to reevaluate after the removal of other QTC prolonging medications. Clozapine is a medication that must be titrated slowly it takes several weeks to get to the optimum dose. It is important to know also that if a patient stops clozapine for greater than 48 hours, it must be retitrated. In consecutive slides, I provided you with additional information on monitoring clozapine. Here I've listed monitoring considerations for clozapine. We will go into each of these in more detail. 1 in 30, or 3.8 percent of patients, develop mild neutropenia. 1 in 100, or 0.9 percent of patients, develop severe neutropenia. In order to monitor for this, it's generally recommended to do a CBC every week for six weeks, every two weeks, then for six months, then monthly for six months, then annually thereafter. If white blood cells fall below 3.0 or the absolute neutrophil count drops below 1.0, clozapine must be stopped immediately. Patients on clozapine are three times more likely to develop myocarditis than neutropenia. The classical presentation is a patient on clozapine presents with chest pain, dyspnea, flu-like symptoms, with troponinemia and an increase in C-reactive protein. When this is the case, stop clozapine, cover for cholinergic rebound, which will be discussed in a following slide, and send the patient to the hospital for an EKG, echocardiogram, and consultation with cardiology. Eosinophilia may be noted on the CBC. It may indicate any of the following. Myocarditis, when it's combined with an elevated troponin or C-reactive protein, nephritis, when it's combined with an elevated blood urea nitrogen or serum creatinine, pancreatitis, when it's combined with an elevated lipase, or hepatitis, when there is combined derangement of LFTs. It's important here to stop clozapine if there's any significant finding and treat the underlying issue. This will of course require further workup and collaboration with respective specialists. Sialuria is a common issue that increases the risk for pneumonia. Here it's important to monitor for breath sounds, cough, dyspnea, any presence of fever, respiratory rate, changes in oxygen saturation, and elevation of white blood cells. I've listed here three common management options for sialuria due to clozapine. 
Constipation can be a significant issue for patients on clozapine. In fact, they can develop a fatal ileus. While on clozapine, it's important to monitor bowel sounds, bowel patterns, and the presence of nausea or vomiting. To help with this, try to decrease any systemic anticholinergic activity. Look at their other medications to see if they're on any other anticholinergic drugs. To prevent this, it may help to prophylactically treat the patient with docusate and biscodil, or PEG. Maintain a high fiber diet and increase fluid intake. If this is ineffective, I have listed some medications here that have shown some benefit in helping. Abrupt discontinuation of clozapine may result in cholinergic rebound. This causes the symptoms of delirium, nightmares, and diarrhea. It is recommended to give benztropine, one milligram for every 50 milligrams of clozapine in the non-smoker, or every 100 milligrams of clozapine in the smoker. As I mentioned before, if clozapine is stopped for more than 48 hours, the medication will have to be retitrated. Clozapine seizures is another consideration. It's important to note though that orthostatic hypotension is much more common. So ask the question, did they just syncopize due to orthostatic hypotension or was it truly a seizure? If concerned, Depakote is a better option than Lamictal because it covers both generalized and myoclonic seizures. These options are also better than phenytoin and carbamazepine because they will decrease the plasma levels of clozapine by 50%. Here I've listed a graph showing clozapine levels. There are three key reasons to check clozapine levels. Number one, if there's a poor response at 600 milligrams. Number two, if there's concern for inhibitors or inducers. Or number three, if there are any unusual side effects. For downloadable content, such as written notes, PowerPoint slides, and more related to this lecture series, please visit my website using the link below. You can also support my goal of continuing to provide new content through Patreon, where becoming a patron will provide you with access to downloadable content as I create new content. Thank you for your support. Here are my references for this presentation. Thank you for watching.